What's happening everybody? Trey here, joined as always by my dad Sean, and today reactions to the classics. We got another review of Mr. Tom Waits yes. as we are going through his uh, discography in a chronological order. We are up today to the heart of Saturday Night, album number two. Yes. We've uh, done Closing Time, and then... Uh, Which was fantastic. Many months ago, we did Rain Dog. So this uh, comes courtesy of a suggestion from our patron, one of our main guys, Josh. Of course, man. Josh, Thank you, Josh. You, you already know we appreciate Appreciate yeah, you here, man. man. So, looking forward to diving into this. If this is your first time stopping by, we uh, thank you for doing that. If you like this video, be sure to give us that big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future Tom Waits album reviews. And uh, if you'd like to link up with our community, we got a great Facebook group, which you can find down below, as well as all our uh, other social media. And if you'd like to have us review a record just like Josh, you can check out our Patreon page. But uh, all that to say, man, let's get into the quick facts of this. Uh, before we go track by track. You already kind of mentioned the second studio album released in 1974. Number 339 on the Rolling Stones Top 500 Albums of All Time. This one was produced by the famous Bones Howe, who cut his engineering teeth on early 60s jazz sessions. And the album cover is based on In the Wee Small Hours by Frank Sinatra. It's an illustration featuring a tired Tom Waits being observed by a blonde prostitute as he exits a neon-lit cocktail lounge mm -hmm. Late at night. Boy, that's a lot going on well, there. Well, you would expect that kind of from Mr. Waits. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Closing Time did a great job of having the cover reflect the atmosphere of the record. Yes. And this one does, too. Just kind of that seediness, the hardest Saturday yeah. night. Yeah, exactly. And as with all of Tom's albums that we've come across, all the songs are written and composed by Mr. Waits. Mm -hmm. So that gives you that consistency, Trey. So I guess we're going to jump right in. Let's do it. Side one. New Coat of Paint. Yeah, and here you're immediately bombarded kind of with that uh, piano. Lots of it on this one, real nice. Yeah, and which we had a lot of on Closing Time, of course. Uh, a couple great lines in here. Here amidst the shuffle of an overflowing day, our love needs a transfusion, so let's shoot it full of wine. You know, sometimes you just need that liquid courage to spice yeah. some stuff up. You're going to go paint the town, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of with a play on words there. Him and his girl are going yeah. out, and they're just going to have a good time. I think this is a nice way to open oh. the album, set the tone yeah. of the overall sound of the album. No, I, I enjoyed it, and hey, when uh, Bob Seger covers it, you, you got to be doing something right You, you know you're def well. definitely doing something right. That's going to take us to, uh, I'm already gave a spoiler alert, my favorite track mm -hmm. on the entire album, San Diego Serenade. This one's stripped back. The vocal is fantastic. Just a great song. Basically, he's telling you the story of you don't realize what you have until it's gone. Yeah, it's a track that was tinged with regret. As yeah. you mentioned, just he's looking back on all these things that he wishes he had done and uh, regrets that he didn't. Yes. And a highlight here was definitely on Tom's vocals and the lyricism. You had a sweet string arrangement arrangement that I, I thought just uh, was a nice thematic shift from a uh, new coat of paint. So uh, getting, getting a little different spice of stuff up here. Exactly. Now we're going to go to semi-sweet. And the semi is a play on words mm. because this woman is dating a truck driver. <laughs> and she wants to tell him not to come back. Mm. But at the end of the day, she just can't. She doesn't have the courage to do it. So the song kind of unfolds that. It's much more bluesy. I didn't yeah. like it quite as well as I like the other two songs, but some clever songwriting here. No, yeah, it's uh, heavy on that bluesy and definitely leaned into the jazz yes. uh, instrumentation as well. And all in all, I felt this was a bit meandering for me personally. Yeah. Uh, it just felt a little bit flat, even if I uh, did think Tom delivered a solid a vocal performance here. But uh, then we pick stuff up with our next track shiver me timbers yeah which is kind of slang you know that a pirate uses mm -hmm. when he's well know. and we know tom likes to lean into that a little uh, from rain dogs yeah <laughs> yeah exactly you know a little bit of surprise he name drops martin eden who's a character in a jack london book who commits suicide by drowning tom said martin eden gonna be proud of me now he is running away from his family and life basically mm -hmm. in this song it's chilled out oh yeah um, definitely different from the last song nice piano on here yeah this definitely up the uh, emotional punch yeah that got I the got. strings too yeah you started to almost reminisce about a place you've never even been because good point uh, tom was able to really i think paint the uh picture with his lyrics so vivid and uh you could really feel that as the listener this uh, was one of my favorites on this entire yeah, record. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Now we're going to move to Diamonds on My Windshield, which, Trey, I didn't, I didn't know what that meant once I read 
with diamonds on my windshield. And I thought, oh, yeah. So you, you, you learn whenever I you learn something, make common sense. Uh, when the rain falls on your windshield and you see the raindrops there, if it's you know wide enough <laughs> that you can see them, uh, it, it looks mm -hmm. like diamonds. So in that vein, he's describing his journey driving. It's pretty much a spoken word in here with some sort of bass. Yeah, you had that double bass yeah. to give that uh, bit of that jazzy flair again, and almost just like a uh, you know lyrical poetry. Yeah, type it was of it delivery was it, here. You know, we know later on Tom definitely mm -hmm. gets into that, but this is the first song off the off the two yeah. albums. That's the first time we come across like, oh, this guy's going to do something a little different here. He's going to mm -hmm. pivot to something else. Uh, and I, though I I appreciated what Tom was doing, it wasn't my favorite style that's found. No, on this it record. wasn't mine either. But uh, hey, man, I uh, tip my cap for switching it up a little bit there, and I can see some people really uh, really enjoying just kind of the, the backdrop of the double. Bass. Oh yeah, of course. That brings us to the last song already of side one. In parentheses, looking for, and mm -hmm. then it's the title track. The heart of Saturday night. Oh, absolutely. And here, just like the uh, title suggests, this guy's out there kind of looking to yeah, it's got have a, some liveliness. It's and got fun. a great story in the lyrics. And on a on a Saturday night, man, we've all been there. We're you know hit from a hard work week, so Saturday nights are time to go out on the town, yeah. so to speak, and just uh, enjoy life a little bit. And Tom really reflects that attitude and. Uh, that spirit in this track. Yeah, he's behind the wheel. He's got his girl next to him, mm -hmm. which harkens back a little bit to the first track, New Coat of Paint. That's and right. they're driving around looking for somewhere to have a good time. And he has some money. He just got paid. Uh, one of the standout tracks for me, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and then that's going to take us now to Fumbling with the Blues. Yeah, it starts outside too on our traditional mm. vinyl back in the day. And uh, this one I thought had some uh, just awesome lyrics and alliter it did. alliteration by Tom. He notes, two dead ends and you've still got to choose. Another line says, and I'm a pool shooting shimmy shyster shaking my head. Uh, you know, talk about alliteration right Man, there. I was going to say, I wouldn't even attempt to read that <laughs> like you just did. But uh, again, leans heavy on the jazzy Jazzy blues. Yeah, much more instrumental, that's driven. That's what I, I wrote on here. And, uh, you know, I just enjoyed, uh, again, kind of popping up with that Vagabond uh, type of, uh, you know, spirit and theme that Tom visits a lot to, and the work that we've heard, at yeah. least. Yeah, and in the song, he's in the bar, mm -hmm. and he's kind of reminiscing about how he's got burnt by women in these bad <laughs> relationships. But then he catches the eye of another woman, and he's like, I'm going to hook up with her and repeat this. That takes us to Please Call Me Baby. Basically, in the song, they got in a fight. She left. Mm -hmm. She's out walking in the rain. He's saying, we always fight, but... There's got to be something better than this. But there's a great line in the song. And I wish to God you'd leave me, baby. I wish to God you'd stay. Life's so different than it is in your dreams. Strings are nice. Mm -hmm. Pretty good track. You're going to see a theme with me here you already have. The lyricism is, is great. Mm -hmm. His songwriting is great on this. Not every song is great. But the songwriting, I much respect. Yeah, this actually ended up being one of my favorites on here. Just because I, can see that. I, I think it really just cuts to the heart of what people feel after they get in a getting a little uh, tussle with their lover, you know, an argument. And, yeah. Um, and I, too, uh, the, yeah, there's just so many great couplets in here. He notes one time uh, something along the lines of, if he exercises his devils, then his angels are going to leave, too. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. And he, he knows that he might be cruel and this and that, but, hey, you're blind. So uh, just uh, the lyricism and wordplay in here I thought was fantastic and uh, uh, definitely the highlight for me on this uh, second side. Yeah, I would, I would probably agree with with that that's going to move us to depot depot and mm. trey back in the day bus depots were i mean and they may still be but really back in the day yeah. during this time bus depots were hustling and bustling a lot of people took greyhound buses we we learned on the last album closing time tom had moved from san diego to la so that's right now he's in la and he said the first couple years that he lived in l he la he'd always go down to the greyhound <laughs> bus terminal in downtown los angeles and just hang out and watch people so, so that people watch people watch it so that's kind of what uh what he's doing here and he talks about in this interview you know i remember these uh, from being a kid and being in a bus depots a few times they had the the chairs you plastic chairs you sit in and there's a tv right here you just put a coin in and then the tv would come on you oh. could watch a tv that seemed pretty slick and technological <laughs> back in the 70s for us but so he's saying that he'd go down watching tv mm. check out the people more horns in this one yeah for sure uh, which kind of i guess fit the a bit more energetic in, uh, yeah, exactly. arrangement on this one, uh, though not a highlight for me. Uh, I think you've summed it up pretty well just with the uh, interesting subject matter kind of, again, reflects that, that drifter that uh, Tom likes to yeah. you know, push into. 
Then we go to Drunk on the Moon. I really enjoyed the line because I thought I heard a saxophone. I'm drunk on the moon, and then boom, what do you know? The saxophone hits, again, leans into that familiar jazz type yes. of uh, arrangement that's just littered throughout this record. Uh, a kind of a middle-of-the-road tune for me. Yeah, and basically he's just walking down the street, I think, kind of telling you yeah. what he's observing as, as he's going. And as you said, bluesy, more horns driven. It's okay. Now we're going to finish out the album. We mm-hmm. finished out the first side mm-hmm. with the heart of Saturday Night. Now we're going to finish out the album with the ghosts mm-hmm. of Saturday Night. So I thought that was a nice uh, wordplay and nice arrangement. And it captures the feeling of a quiet city early on Sunday morning after everyone's gone home. One of the things featured in there, Napa Leone's Pizza House. It's a real restaurant in National City, California, where Tom actually worked as a teenager way back in in 1965. Trey, uh, uh, once again, it's almost a spoken word. Yeah, like diamonds on my windshield. Yeah, a headline. nice story, though. Really, mm-hmm. you know, it kept me enthralled in what was going on. Well, and to me, this could just be me reading into it, but all the previous tracks kind of had that vibe of that, uh, in one way or another, that Saturday night out on the town yeah. looking for some. Maybe I'm drunk, you know, outside with the moonlight. Maybe I'm with my gal here looking for a good time. And this, I think, is a fitting closer because it is now, okay, all that Saturday night craziness is gone. Now that sun's coming up on Sunday morning, the town is a bit empty. Yeah, and yeah. You got to, you're able to reminisce on uh, the previous night. Previous so, night, and it's time to get back to the real world, unfortunately. Exactly. You know? So uh, I, I thought it was a fitting closer, and uh, now that'll transition us to our favorite tracks. Mine's going to be Shiver Me Timbers, and I'm also going to go with Please Call Me Baby. Well, we got different ones. I'm going Looking For the Heart of Saturday Night, and mm. of course that sweet San Diego Serenade. Ooh. So that's going to take us to our overall grade. We both loved Closing Time, mm. the first album. Man, what a... Uh, what a surprise that oh, was, what, just in how good it was. One of the was. better debut albums I think you're going to come across. I agree 100%. This one for me was not as good, mm-hmm. but it's I very agree. solid. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not one track on here that I don't think is pretty good. No, yeah, it didn't have a, maybe a highlight like Martha from Closing Time. Right. But... San Diego Serenade for me was by far the standout for me, mm-hmm. but it wasn't something that I would go tell everybody, hey, you really need to listen yeah. to the song. But overall, the album for itself, if you're just going to throw on an album, it works mm-hmm. from track to track. Track. Definitely. It's just a very solid album. And for that, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts of you. Yeah, that you did a good album. I mean, very consistent from opening yes. to closer. It's a easy listen, you know, around uh, the 40 minute mark yeah. or so. Uh, I, I didn't think there was uh, much filler on here. Um, and that no. said, not a lot that would make maybe my all time Tom Waits playlist. I'm no. making as, you know, we're going through this, but, but still a solid record nonetheless, especially going into that, uh, you know, the piano and the jazz inspired and the bluesy stuff. Yeah. So I thought it was a good record and uh, definitely worth listening to oh, if yeah. you're a, a fan of weight. So I'm going to 7 out of 10 for me here and I'm definitely looking forward as we continue to go through Waits' catalog and uh, especially when he's going to start transitioning to a, you know, a little bit more... A little uh, more eclectic individual, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm so, looking forward to that as well. That's going to be cool to, to see the growth here and that's why I'm glad we're going uh, chronologically. Yeah. Logically, and uh, I just want to shout out again our patron and uh, thank you, Josh. Tom Waits, super fan Josh here. Um, looking forward already to next month with the third record. Um, but all that to say, let us know what you think of this album down in the comments below, y'all. That appreciate the research. Oh, yeah, fun, man. As always, and until next time, thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see ya.